Hello, welcome back to part two of my little Robin draw with me. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll link that at the top of the screen. Although you don't necessarily need to watch that first. I'll give a quick recap of the materials that I'm using for this drawing. The paper is Strathmore Tone Tan. I did find it a bit tricky, this paper, to start with because it is a lot thinner and has less tooth than what I'm used to drawing on, which is either Fabriano hot pressed watercolour paper or Clairefontaine pastel mat. But once I'd figured out the right colours for the robin and wasn't putting as many layers down, I really enjoyed drawing on it. Um, it does actually take the pencil very well. And you can get really fine lines and lots of details despite the lack of tooth. Well, maybe, maybe it's because of lack of tooth. I'm just assuming you all know what tooth is. <laughs> um, if you don't, basically, the bumpier the paper, the more tooth it has. So in watercolour paper, hot pressed is the smoothest, but still with a little tooth. And rough has the most tooth, um, with not, N-O-T, somewhere in the middle. And then drawing paper like Bristol board is really smooth. So barely has, well, basically doesn't have any tooth. The pencils that I'm using are mainly Faber-Castell Polychromos um, and some Caran Dash Luminance and Derwent Lightfast. You'll also see me use a Mono Zero eraser. That's a tool that I just couldn't be without. It's like a me mechanical rubber for precision work. Um, and I also use a blusher brush to sweep away any rubber dust and quite often dog hairs too. I will leave links um, for everything that I'm using in the description just in case you want to go and have a look at them. I'm also planning to do a video soon about all the different tools that I use. I've got one more Robin draw with me to come, part three, and then a vlog. So I'll probably film the tools video after that. I've also got quite a bit of footage from previous drawings that I need to have a look at. None of them are of the full drawing, but I'm sure I can make some useful videos out of them. I'm sure there's one of Bluebell the Labrador's eye and some of my Pine Martin too. While I'm talking about YouTube videos, one of my goal for the year is to monetize YouTube. And if you've seen my latest vlog, I mentioned that I was doing the Business Bakery's 100 day goal, but I had decided to set my goal as increasing my online sales. I lasted about a week with doing the daily micro actions for this, but for a good reason though. It just really didn't feel aligned. So I am still going with the 100 day goal, but I've changed the goal to monetizing YouTube instead. And it already feels so much better. It's something that I really want to do and I really enjoy making videos. Whereas I clearly still have some blocks around selling because I find it so difficult. So I think I need to do some journaling work on that. Although I do feel that if I can build up my audience on YouTube, then increasing my online sales will probably become easier anyway. I know you can still sell online without an audience, but obviously it takes a lot of marketing, which again is something I'm not great at. So going back to this goal, with how much my channel has grown just in the past three weeks, and I'm still so blown away with how many views that part one of this Robin had, 
has had and it's still getting daily views as well so yeah although it's probably quite a big challenge to achieve monetization by the middle of March I do feel that I can actually have quite a good shot at achieving it and if I don't quite reach it by then then so be it I think it's something that probably will grow itself as long as I keep making and sharing the right content. I also need to prioritise my time better while I'm still at my day job. This is actually a bit of a revelation about all that though, because if I'm honest, I don't think I will ever actually feel comfortable not having that guaranteed income. So. I really need to take a good look at my relationship with both my day job and art. You'll soon come to realise that I chop and change like the weather. But no, I really do need to make some serious changes and actually stick to it this time before I make myself ill. And there is so much that I can do to make it work doing both. And who knows, one day I probably will be able to comfortably become a full-time artist as long as I sort of get the right processes in now just to keep like chipping away at it, going steady rather than going all out, burning out and so on and so on. I was watching a video from Amelie Jones, it was her 2020 review and she sparked this whole thought process. It's definitely worth a watch if you go find her channel, once you finish watching this one, of course. She made me realise how detrimental the way that I'm working is. I'm never really giving myself any downtime because I'm always doing the odd half hour when I, when I can or jumping from one task to another because I've thought of something Um, and trying to work in the evening when I'm mentally exhausted from the day job and then I don't really get much done or it doesn't feel like it anyway. Over time it probably does add up but I don't get any like instant wins if you know what I mean and then I question whether it's all worth it will I ever get to where I want to be? That's probably why I feel so motivated with YouTube at the moment, because I literally can see it working, because my channel's growing, my views have gone up. Of course, I know building a business takes time, and it's always going to be growing in some way or another, but you do still need the little wins to keep you motivated. I also think I would be so much more productive if I actually do less and set solid chunks of time for art instead. Like, say, on a Wednesday morning, because I only have half a day in the afternoon at the day job, four hours. So, essentially, treat art like a job, which I know I'm not doing. And if I want it to be a successful business, then that's what it has to be, a job. Um, Otherwise, it would just be a hobby. The trouble is, art has always been the thing that gets pushed aside. But why? And this is what I don't understand. Art is my thing, and it's what I want to do, what I've always wanted to do. But I don't let myself do it. It's almost it's like it's not important, not a priority. But again, why? So that's definitely something I'm going to work on to change this year. I've said before somewhere, YouTube or Instagram post, um, that this is going to be my year for art. It's I'm going to make it work. But that won't necessarily be leaving the day job, because as I say, I don't think I'll ever be comfortable not having that security. That's one of my um, core values, is security and stability. So as I say, it's a bit of a revelation that I really need to change the way I think about this, like the, the art, the day job. 
almost in a way that I'm doing my day job so that I can do art. But I just need to make sure that I don't let the day job burn me out because it sometimes it can be quite tiring and stressful. It's quite a busy job. Um, there's always, I've got to-do lists everywhere and just, and it, I'm in the NHS, so you just everything always changes. You kind of get one process going and then something new comes along. Things change all the time. I mean, one thing I could say, I never get bored in that job. The other thing that I realised after watching Amelie's video um, so I do three and a half days at the day job. I, and I know I'm very lucky with that, but I have worked hard to get up to the level I am with a good wage. That means I don't need to work full time. My plan had always been that I'd make my way up to management level and then I'd have more money so I'd be able to leave the job quicker. But it obviously didn't work like that. Um, there was more responsibility, more stress and then I was like, more tired when I got home um, so I just didn't have the energy to do art but I did change jobs um, just over a year ago to try and help with that so I'm in basically the same role but I'm IT lead now rather than IT manager and it's a smaller practice um, and it's just run differently I haven't got to go to all the meetings, um, got the staff responsibilities. I'm very rarely called at home, which was a big thing at the other practice. And also, when we were saving up for our first house, I worked technically three jobs. Um, so I had I worked at the doctors, I waitressed in the evenings and in the weekends as well. And I was also still doing my art and jewellery making back then um, and like going to craft fairs and things. So yeah, I'm at the stage now where I don't need to work full time and I've done my time working a lot. We've got our house, our dogs and we're comfortable. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that I need to put the other one and a half hours of a working week into art and then so I can give myself an actual weekend and have a couple of hours off in the evenings too so that I have time for the self-care exercise, walking the dogs and the house chores and still get to bed at a decent hour. I'm also going to try and stop procrastinating and just get on with the jobs first thing rather than thinking it's okay I'll just do that in the evening because I very rarely do that. Um, it's kind of a misconception that when you're self-employed you can work whenever you feel like it. I definitely think structure is important. Something else that I know I need to do is only focus on one or two things at a time rather than trying to do a bit of everything and that applies with everything every aspect of my life not just art there's always so much to do but you just can't do it all so right now in art that would be YouTube and producing the drawings for my oracle cards then my other goals can come later I know you're probably thinking this is all common sense, but as I say, I chop and change and I also have a hard time sticking to things. I get bored easily, which is something else I need to factor in. And I think if I block out time to work on those two different things within my art day, rather than trying to completely finish one job at a time, I know that is a little contradictory, but I need to find a good balance. That's actually my word for the year, balance. And it really does fit in with everything that I'm trying to say here and everything I'm trying to achieve this year. I need balance between my day job and art and then between work and rest as well. 
I've recently started using Moonology Oracle cards and the card I pulled the other day, the start of this week actually, while I was thinking about all of this was the Waning Moon card and this card asks what do you need to release and it also suggests that you stop trying so hard and move forward with as little resistance as possible which is all very fitting right now. Um, I can't actually believe how accurate these cards are, but that's how they work, isn't it, I guess? <laughs> um, so thinking about this from the other side first, what I want to keep, I know that I really need to make more time for drawing because, I mean, without this, I don't really have much of an art business. And as I've said, I really enjoy making videos, so I definitely want to keep that. And so far, the two main things at the moment that I think I need to release is the pressure of making sales, especially while I do still have a regular stable income. And thinking about it logically, the more I draw, the more I'll have to share on social media, which is still a form of marketing, and potentially my social media audience will grow anyway. And then, hopefully, the sales will increase on their own. I've also been wondering whether I could just do a couple of big shop updates instead, rather than just constantly marketing all the different products. And then you're focused on the selling side in one go and doing all the jobs related to selling in bulk, like taking the photos, listing, promoting, packaging... Hmm. I don't know, <laughs> just thinking about that sounds like too big a job to carry out when I'm not doing art full time. I mean, I couldn't, or rather, I didn't want to, do it for this 100 day goal. And that was just really like listing my cards on Etsy that I didn't want to do. Although, to be fair, I did get all the photos ready and... I could quite easily just list them all in one go. I reckon it would probably take about two hours at the most. But it's more really that I'm not sure that I want to go back to Etsy. Mainly because to get my shop going, I'd need to be sending customers over there. And if I can manage that, then I may as well send them to the website. But then obviously... I'd have to keep on sending them to my website, whereas once Etsy gets going, in theory, that would run itself. Anyway, that's probably a good topic for a video in itself. Um, oh, I've forgotten what I was talking about now. Oh yes, what do I need to release? I'm also a bit stuck on what to do about my mailing list and monthly newsletters. I know everyone keeps saying that you need a mailing list, um, like you can't rely on social media, or you shouldn't rely on social media, um, but this is something else that just really doesn't feel aligned for me. I'm not sure what it is, but I find it difficult to just sit down and write a newsletter. I guess it's because you're trying to sell in it and promote your work, well, part in part of it anyway. Um, I always make sure that the majority of the newsletter was about what I've been doing. But when I haven't been spending much time on art, I haven't got a lot to talk about. And that was kind of where I got stuck, uh, because I was trying to think of topics that I could talk about. And, and I wanted to make sure that I was giving value. And then kind of, well our good old friend imposter syndrome pops up. I suppose I should just condense down what I've been talking about in this video. Maybe that's the secret, just take little bits from all the other content that I've produced in the month. And I suppose it doesn't have to be a long newsletter, does it? I don't know, maybe I should just keep going with it for a bit and see what happens. I know that journaling will help me a lot. I mean, just talking about this all now is bringing up a lot of things to the surface. But
But again, it's fitting that in. I think as soon as I've finished recording this, I'm going to try and figure out some sort of schedule. Maybe I just do need to do more of these draw with me's. <laughs> then I'm drawing, creating content for YouTube and processing all of my thoughts at the same time. I do have a question for you about that, actually. Why do you like watching these videos? Do you watch them for the drawing side? Or just to have some company while you're drawing yourself or housework or anything like that? Um, or do you watch them just while you're taking a break? The reason I'm asking is because in this one, well, and the last one, I edited all the pauses out, like when I sharpened my pencils. Um, and in this one, this is a voiceover. So there won't really be any silences. But if you wouldn't mind the gaps in the drawing and some quiet bits while I think of other things to talk about um, or while I'm concentrating, um, then I probably could upload more of them quite quickly as well. So yeah, please do let me know what you think in the comments. I have also started working with the moon cycles as well and it's actually a new moon tonight, Saturday the 21st of January. Um, the moon is currently in Aquarius and it's also a super moon which just means it's very close to the earth. So my book says it's potentially a very powerful new moon. When it is a new moon, you need to make sure that you're clear about your desires and then set your intentions and send them out to the universe. Moon work is really closely connected to manifesting and the law of attraction. So you send out your wishes at the new moon and then do release and forgiveness work at the full moon. So I'll be doing the new moon work later. I've got a moonology diary by Yasmin Boland um, and she gives you all the prompts of what to do at each full, uh, full and new moon. It's probably quite good that I'm recording this voiceover on a new moon because it's really helping me get my thoughts clear and um, actually figure out what I want from this year and what I need to change and work on as well. And then later on, I can go and write all that down in my new moon worksheet. You can work with the moon energy for a couple of days before and after the phases. So if you're watching this or listening <laughs> on Sunday or Monday, the 22nd or 23rd of January, and you're interested, then why not give it a go? If you look for Yasmin Boland, um, she gives out a lot of information, but I'm sure you can find it all on Google anyway. I didn't realise just how much there is to moonology and astrology. I've still got a lot to learn, but it's also interesting. We don't just have the one star sign, or sun sign is its proper name. We also have a moon sign, a rising sign, and then 12 different houses. I think there's other signs as well. Oh, I don't know those ones. I don't really know much about the houses yet either. But your rising sign is quite important. It's more personal and accurate than your sun sign. My rising sign is actually the same as my sun sign, though, which is Leo. So I'm very Leo, apparently, although I'm not really sure about that. I mean, yes, I have the creativity traits and the ambition, and I can be a bit hot-headed sometimes, but I definitely don't like being centre of attention. Okay, so I just paused the recording for a minute and had a look at what the Leo traits are again. And 
one article says that you like to be in the spotlight, but at the same time, you might worry about what other people think of you. And that's very true, although it doesn't bother me quite as much now as it did when I was in secondary school and college. So I suppose although I don't like putting myself in the spotlight, I do put my art out there. Another trait is that you have your lazy days and can lose motivation quickly. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> I think I am quite Leo then. What star sign are you? Your moon sign reveals our habits, instincts and reactions. Mine is Aries. And I was actually quite shocked at just how accurate this is for me. It says... Nothing quite happens soon enough with this position of the moon. It's hard for them to see long term and wait for things to happen. Instant gratification rules. And what have I been talking about? It's also a fiery position, independent, self-confidence is variable and they go through plenty of ups and downs and are temperamental. <laughs> yep. That's all me. But what I found most interesting was that it made sense of why I can't stick with things. So apparently, Moon in Aries people have plenty of energy, but this happens in bursts. And if something isn't completed until the end of such a burst, it will be abandoned until next time. So yeah, it's all very interesting. Let me know if you find out what your moon sign is and how accurate it is for you. I used a website called Lunarium. Okay, we're about halfway through the video now and I've covered the biggest topics that I wanted to talk about. What else do I have to tell you? Um, oh yeah, I went to a local cafe to see about displaying my originals in there because I know they have different artists exhibiting every month or so. It's actually in a church and they're very charity orientated. I'm not sure if they charge a commission or a hanging fee or anything, but as long as it's not extortionate, I'm happy to pay for a good cause. And it will be good practice as well and good exposure. So it's a win-win. They did say yes and that they were actually coming to the end of the artist bookings. So I should be next in line. They had planned to have a break for a bit. Um, and I said that's fine. There was no rush but that I was ready to display whenever they were. The lady who deals with it, though, wasn't in that day, so I left my business card and number, but I haven't heard anything yet. It was the 5th of January that I went in, and the man that I spoke to said that she'd contact me that week, so I really need to chase that up. It is one of my big goals or dreams to have my own soul exhibitions and this would be one albeit a small one but that's the best way to start isn't it I do wonder if this is more the way I should go rather than craft fairs so exhibitions and shows craft fairs are so hit and miss and there are a lot of effort for sometimes very little return. I'm not sure if the monthly market in Bewley that I did last year is going to be running again this year. I haven't heard anything about it. Um, they didn't do January last year and they started again in February. So we'll see. But I have already been thinking anyway that I could use the monthly table fee for online advertising instead 
and just not do the market. It's difficult because a few months there I did take a decent amount of money but then others I barely made the table money back which is £20 by the way. So not not one of the most expensive but still it's it's all money. <laughs> um, one month, October actually, which I thought would be good as it was getting closer to Christmas but there was barely any footfall and I only took about £30, so after the profit margin and the petrol and the table money, I probably made a loss. It should be a very good location for a market because Bewley gets a lot of tourists visiting in the summer, but this year it was just so quiet on the days that we were there in the summer. One day the car park was full, but there was still no one around in the high street. So we think most people probably parked there and used their parking clocks, which is a prepaid parking scheme around here for a lot of the car parks. And they probably then walked down to a place called Buckler's Hard, which is just down the road, about a two or three mile walk. It's a very nice walk though, um, but you have to pay to park over there. Um, and it was a, a really lovely day that day. Then the next month was when we had the heat wave, so everyone probably went to the beach instead, or were just sensible and stayed indoors. Then the next month, August, it wasn't on, which I thought... It might have been a good month because um, just before the kids went back to school, uh, the last one in the summer holidays, actually the only one I think that was in the summer holidays, so it probably would have been quite good, but never mind. Um, in a way, I am hoping that they just don't run it again so that I don't have to make the decision. It is good to have a regular place for my local customers to visit though and I have found that people who have followed me for a long time have actually made the decision to buy a print that they love because they've seen it in person. I don't know. It is a lot of hard work and often not worth it. I think I probably will just do a couple of craft fairs around Christmas time and leave it at that. I actually need to hurry up and decide whether I want to do the New Forest show this year because the submissions are open now and I'm not sure when they close. I'll have to look that up when I've finished this. I've already booked the time off work for it just in case I do decide I want to do it. Maybe I should just go for it. It would be good fun and a good experience. I loved every minute of the country show that I did last year. The New Forest show is much bigger than that one though. And it would definitely be a good place to promote commissions, pet portraits, because I can draw something there and it is much more orientated around country life than the one that I did last year. Um, that is a steam show as well as a country show. Uh, and it's very well known for the steam side of it, so steam engines. Um, and people interested in steam engines probably, if I'm honest, aren't my target audience. <laughs> I still did really well there, and I learnt a lot as well. They let me have uh, my little table set up out in the middle of the marquee opposite my stool um, so I could draw out there and and it really got a lot of people engaging with me much more than if I'm just stood behind my stool. A lot of people like when you do craft fairs and things they kind of just walk around sort of the middle of the room so that <laughs> I don't know so that it's almost like they're scared that you're going to talk to them and make them buy something but 
I don't do that. I just say hello or smile. And if they want to talk, then that's lovely. I've gone off on a tangent there and I can't remember what I was talking about now. Oh yeah, so commissions are something that I know I'm going to leave until the second half of the year. I definitely like to do a couple each year, but I don't want that to be what my business is based on. Although they're good for like guaranteed income because well, as long as the customer likes it, you know you're going to get paid for that work at the end of it. But then also, on the other hand, that's it. Once you've drawn it and got the money from it, that's it. You're probably not going to make any more money from that artwork because chances are you're not going to be able to make prints, greeting cards from it. I mean, sometimes... Um, it can be a popular breed that you've drawn and the customer will be happy for you to make prints and greeting cards. It just all depends, I guess. The New Forest show would fit in nicely with this because it's in July, so it's a good time to start advertising for Christmas commissions. I would really like to do it and be able to camp there too. It's not too far away from us, probably about 20 minutes. But you do have to be there from 8 till 6 to man your stool. Which isn't too bad because apart from the setup, which I assume would be the day before anyway. Um, so it will all be set up ready. So you've just got to get there. The dogs would be with us, so they'll have had lots of walks throughout the day. And I suppose 8 till 6 is only an hour longer than my working day anyway. But I'd just like to have the experience of camping there. Because at the, the one I did last year, we could have camped there too. I say camp. It would be in a camper van, not a tent. Camping in a tent doesn't really appeal to me. And that's why I'm saying that I'd like to be able to camp. Because we haven't got a camper van yet. It will just be more of like a, a day van, but hopefully one that has a pop-up top so that it's something that I can use as my everyday vehicle. So we're saving up for that at the moment. Um, it will replace my car because it's got a problem. Um, it's, its head gaskets are going, which it will cost more to replace them than the car's worth. But yeah, at the the show last year, it would have been really lovely to stay because they had um, entertainment on at night. Um, and I think it just would have been so nice to just get up and go to your stall and then just chill out afterwards in the evening in the camper van. So yeah, hopefully. Well, we'll see. I think I probably will do the new forest show because it, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And... I am in a position to be able to do it this year, so why not? You never know what's going to happen down the line. So that also gives me kind of a deadline to get my oracle cards produced. I was just thinking, as long as I get them in time for Christmas, but if I'm going to do the New Forest show, then I may as well have them for there as well. The more I'm talking, and I guess processing all of my thoughts, I think I am happy with the decisions that I've made so far on what to focus on first, and sort of the direction that I'm taking my business. There is something else that I do want to get back to this year though. Um, so I actually turned away from art for a couple of years when I was back in college and I focused on photography instead but now that is just a hobby it's really only for my reference photos so I say anything that I want to include in a drawing I'll go out and try and take photos of it and when we go for walks I've always got my camera I'm on the lookout for birds deer anything <laughs> but 
I've now got so many photos and they're all just sat on my computer going to waste. So last year, well, I've been thinking about this for a few years, but last year I actually did it. Um, I decided to set up a page on Ko-fi to sell them to other artists to use as reference photos. Only for £1 per photo. But I'm hoping that that can be another good passive income stream. And there are quite a few photos on there, but I just didn't have enough time to stay consistent with it. Um, or I didn't have the motivation for it. Um, and having to keep promoting it on social media as well. I mean, I was hoping that... So one of the things, the clauses, was that... Um, and the reason why it's just a pound is that if you use it, you need to reference me. So I was hoping that it would kind of promote itself. And I did have a few artists buy the photos, but I don't think they actually ever used the photos, or not yet anyway. So it didn't quite work as I'd planned. So yeah, I just let it slip and it just ground to a halt really. But I want to factor in doing maybe an hour a week on it. Sorting through my photos is something that I could do just while I'm watching telly. Um, and then it also gives me a reason to go for nice walks in the forest, looking for birds and other wildlife. And the plan also was that people could ask me if I had any photos. And if I didn't, I'd try and go and get the photos for them. I mean, not that I should need a reason to go for a nice walk in the forest, but you know what it's like. There's just not enough hours in the day and something has to give. But I do want to go for more mindful walks as part of my self-care. So if that's something you're interested in, um, I'll link the page in the description below. As I say, there are quite a few photos on there already. I do also have a separate um, Facebook and Instagram page for it. It's at Katie's Patch. Katie with a Y. Um, I'll give you a little insight into some of the random thoughts that go through my head. So my name is Katie, but my friends all call me Kate. And when I was younger as well, when I cared a lot more about what people thought of me, um, so going back to the star sign thing. So a lot of kids didn't pronounce the T and they said it like Katie and I absolutely hated it. But equally, when I pronounced it properly, Katie, I just felt so posh and out of place. And I'm sure there'd probably been some kids that started taking the mickey out of me for how I pronounced it, which was really unfair, but you know. <laughs> anyway, so back then I preferred to be called Kate, but obviously I got over that a long time ago. But when I set up my art business, I just called it Kate Bird Art because I thought it sounded a bit better than Katie Bird Art. It flows a bit better. But the, the random thought that I've had is that I wonder what would have happened if I'd have made my brand Katie Bird or I don't know used that somehow I've always liked um the books what Katie did um and I would have liked to have been what Katie drew or what Katie draws next something like that so like would my art have gone on, diff on a different path if I'd have had a different brand name I know it's probably sounding silly but I just mean kind of like the butterfly effect that just one decision can change your whole path. I don't know. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So I'd also been thinking recently, should I just start again from scratch and just change my brand? But obviously that's a lot of hassle because I'd have to change my website, all my business cards and everything. So I just don't think it's worth it. Um, well, I've gone off on another tangent. Um, so I was talking about my Kofi page for the reference photos. So 
do let me know if there's any particular subject that you're wanting to draw and I'll see if I have any photos of it for you. I started thinking about creating a bucket list. It's only got a few things on it at the moment. Um, so I'd like to see the Northern Lights again. I don't know if that really counts because I've already done it, but <laughs> um, like we'd like to go to Iceland to see them. Um, I'd like to see otters in the wild, go whale watching, um, visit Scotland. I'm hoping that that is something that we can do this year, like when we get our camper van. Um, I'd really like to go and do a road trip up there. One thing that might be quite easy is to see starling murmurations. Um, I think there's somewhere quite local that I might be able to see them, so I'll have to try and do that this winter. So that's all that's on there at the moment. I need to have a think about what else to add. Try and think big as well. We've nearly finished the kitchen now. Um, and I owe a lot to my mum and dad for all their help with that. Um, we've just got um, some skirting board to put on and then paint the walls. Um, I need to get a table as well. I've currently got one of my craft fair tables in there. Um, and it's a bit too big. <laughs> in the wrong shape. But I just I can't believe the difference that it's made. Just slightly changing the layout of the room. And it's just opened it up really nicely. It just feels so much nicer. So yeah, I'm so happy with how it's looking. The next job, I think, for the house. We had planned on doing the drive. But it's quite expensive. And I don't really know if it's worth it. Obviously it was so that we could have a camper van. But that was when we were thinking we'd have a camper van and our two cars and we don't need free vehicles um, and also we were thinking of having a, a decent sized camper van but again I, I don't think we really need that for how much we'd actually use it as a camper van a little one will be fine so I think we would benefit more from this other job which is having decking all around the outside of the back of the house i my plan is so that we can just so it'll be a level to the back door the patio doors which currently there's quite a steep drop and steps down um so yeah just have decking up to the level of the door go all the way around the house and also fence off the decking so that like in the winter, it gets quite muddy um, out in the garden where we're on a hill and just all the water runs down. So to be able to shut that off in the winter so that the dogs can still get out. Um, and even in the summer, because obviously they there's cats that sit on the fence and the dogs just go racing up to them, barking. And, and I like them to be supervised in the garden so that they're not eating things they shouldn't be um I don't know what once um somehow there was chewing gum in our garden we never have chewing gum so I don't know where it came from well I do know where it came from um when next door's kids had friends over in their hot tub they must have thrown it over the fence but of course Eli got hold of that luckily I realized because obviously that's poisonous to dogs and also they're a bit stubborn so when we like let them out just to go to the toilet um like really quickly when we about to go out if they get out into the garden it's really difficult to get them back in but also i just think it'd be really nice to be able to walk out there really easy like not having to put shoes on um not having to climb down this step and just have somewhere nice to relax and sit and just enjoy the garden. We're also planning um, a week away soon. We're going to Glastonbury for a couple of days and then going to head on up to the Cotswolds. Um, so we've been to Glastonbury once before uh, just for a day 
Um, it was really nice. So we always said that we would go back and spend some more time there. We're going to walk up the tour. There's these little like um, healing springs. I don't think they're springs, but anyway, healing water sources. And they're like quite spiritual places as well. So they look really pretty. One of them is like underground. I think they built um, a building over it in the Victorian times. I might be completely wrong with this, but um, but that one, they use it for like moon rituals um, and all sorts of things like that. And luckily you can take dogs in. So, so we're going to see that one. And then there's an outdoor one that's like got a really pretty garden around it. And then we'll probably spend a day looking around the town and then the next day head on up to the Cotswolds. Actually, well, actually, it's more, it's outside of the Cotswolds, Worcester, I think, just because it's such a nice little um, Airbnb that we found. It's on a farm that's got a lot of land and like ponds and, and nice walks that you can do within the farm. And the log cabin that we'll stay in looks over the one of the ponds and it just looks so pretty and i thought if it rains then at least we've got a nice place to stay i mean i'm hoping there'll be birds on the pond that i can take photos of and we can just chill it's also near stratford upon avon where shakespeare lived so that'd be nice to go and see and I've always wanted to go to the Cotswolds. It's just so pretty and I think it would be really inspiring. Um, I know like obviously you see all the artists that go there and paint it. And I know quite a few people that have gone on these art holidays there. And then on the way home, we're planning to go and see Stonehenge because I've never been. So I'm really looking forward to all of that. And I'm sure... There will probably be some footage that appears in a future vlog. So I'm running out of things to talk about now. Um, there's about 10 minutes left. I'm really pleased with myself actually because when I first started I thought, oh wow, what am I actually going to talk about for an hour? And I've nearly made it, 50 minutes. It all just started flowing once I started. It might be a bit waffly in places, but hopefully there's some value in there and bits you found interesting and you've learnt some new things, even if it's just things that you've learnt about me. Oh, there were two other things, uh, only little things, but um, I just wanted to say that I'm reading Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic at the moment and it's such a good book. I just, the way she writes, it really keeps you engaged it's really interesting to sort of think of creativity outside of the obvious, so like not just art and photography, but everybody should have a creative life. I mean, like dancing is creativity. I hadn't really thought of it that way before. And just, I think she says basically anything that you love is your creativity. There's one really good quote in there that I like and... Well, I wrote it down as a quote. Um, so, live a life that is driven by curiosity, not fear. And when I read that, it just really resonated. So I thought I'd share it with you. The other thing, have you watched Winter Watch? Um, it was Thursday's episode and there was an artist on there. Um, I just really loved him. I liked his personality just everything about him really um not often that i say that i just found him really inspiring and just watching him for that short little clip it sparked some new ideas and made me think differently about some things he's called paul harfleet he's quite eccentric one of his projects is that he plants pansies in the place of homophobic crime and then takes a photo of it and I assume makes prints out of them but it's just such a different way of thinking about art and then the other one was he draws a bird and then 
dresses up like it so in sort of the same colors and he got more and more eccentric with it all so then the final piece was his drawing and a photo of him next to each other i mean i'm not going to go and dress up as a bird myself but i don't know i just it, it was really inspiring and i definitely think that i need to put a lot more creativity into my work and just go outside of my comfort zone a bit more so yeah, I recommend that you read Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic and go and check out Paul Harfleet. Okay, so I think I'll just put some music in now for the last few minutes. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you have. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot. Um, so yeah, I'll be posting a vlog soon. So look out for that. I try to upload on Sundays, so I'm aiming for every other Sunday. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.